This episode of Beer and Bolters is brought to you by, <laughs> not really brought to us, but, but Heavy Seas Loose Cannon, Hop Free, IPA, maybe Hop Cubed, 7.25. Very nice, some little sip. Mmm. Ah, yeah. That's going to get me through all the ranting and raving people are going to do about this review. And we're reviewing the uh, Grey Knights New Codex. Uh, talk a little bit about this bad boy. Uh, you know. Brought some oldies, be goodies. We can talk about those as well. Uh, some people are going to be very unhappy with the Grey Knights. But you know what? Not so much for me, and I'll tell you why. We'll be right back. All right, guys, and we're back. I wanted to give you a quick hobby update. Uh, we're also working on uh, Logan's Chariot here. I'm going to pull that. So you can see, started working on one Wolfie. This is what I do with all my vehicles. But Logan actually is done. Let me pull him off here real quick and actually pop him on his extra base which I'll probably never run him without Storm Rider. Um, used him for the first time even though he's not finished painting I felt well you know Logan himself is finished painting so I can roll with him. Well, let me put him on the base correctly. There we go. Those tricky magnets. Uh, really happy with the way he came out. If you guys can really see it with the camera. Uh, the axe turned out pretty well. Did a couple different shades of red highlighted to some yellow. Uh, some of the new golds from GW I'm really happy with. Pretty happy with the cloak. What a nice deep red look for that. The cloak is a little obnoxious. It's pretty big. It's out there. I mean, it's hard for him to have the squad of guys around him with that kind of crazy cloak. Well, there he is. Now he's in there. There's like four or five different magnets on there. So I couldn't quite get the right position that I wanted, but I finally did. Pretty cool, and I'm enjoying him. Threw him in Storm Rider for the game which went up against a some volleys of D weapons from uh, some volleys of some distortion cannons from some Wraith Guard. Uh, they were pretty hateful and he left the battle with one wound left and one hall point left. He took on a onslaught. Pretty much everything a 4,000 point Eldar army could shoot at him in one turn uh, that he had misfortune on so everything was rending. So that was pretty hateful but he still survived uh, some of his invulnerable saves obviously didn't go through, but some of them did. But uh, he was a tough cookie. It's just hard. It's a whole different beast using him as his chariot. A whole different beast. Because I can't ally him with... I mean, I can't squad him up with anybody else. So we'll see We'll see what happens with that. I wish he could, I could run some wolves with him or some thunder wolves. But anyway, this review isn't about Logan. This review is about these gentlemen. My Grey Knights. So I've had these for a while. These are actually older metal Grey Knight models, which uh, I painted a long time ago. And got the new Grey Knight Codex here. We're going to push some of this stuff aside. That the way we can uh, look at the Grey Knight Codex. Use the terrain. There's Arjack and his uh, Shield Brothers over there, which was an awesome, awesome formation. Can't complain about that. Those guys are freaking phenomenal. Probably the best formation in the Space Wolf game. For the way that I like to play. So the first thing I want to constructively criticize Games Workshop about is uh, this is a thinner of the new codexes. Not really happy about that. Uh, $49.95, a little pricey. So that right there is kind of disappointing. I didn't opt for the uh, Ultra Mega Mega Edition. I actually thought about it because Grey Knights are another one of my armies. But back in the day when I played them as a Demon Hunters, I'd actually ally them in. I'd ally a unit or two in with my Space Wolves. I really like the list that I played back in the day. I used to play a Blood Claw heavy list, uh, you know, 15 Blood Claws and a Land Raider Crusader with a uh, Iron Priest, um, or I'm sorry, with a Wolf Priest, and how the rules went down. That's actually becoming uh, pretty prevalent today. Um, so it's kind of funny. I've gone back to a thir more third edition Space Wolf army, which is kind of going to match this. And then we had this book come out. Now, for a while, this was probably one of the most prolific armies out there. Uh, just badass array all around. Kind of expensive, uh, but you could do a lot of different things with them. At the end of 5th, or I guess beginning of 6th, I should say, they kind of took a downturn, but then 7th edition, you saw them pop back up with as much psychic spam you could put in there to cast a little bit of everything. So, I kind of stopped playing with them at that point. I just felt, I never felt fluff-wise I would ever see a whole huge force of Grey Knights on the on the table. It didn't make sense. They were a small, very small unit of uh, individuals that would go here or there where they're needed. 
Uh, and back in the day, they used to be the bane of demons. They were, you know, had some pretty cool rules. They weren't a army in themselves. You had to really play them with somebody to be successful. Uh, good strategy. So, let's talk about the Grey Knight book. Off the bat, they've taken a lot of the flavor, similar to what they did with the wolves. And, you know, from this, from the Orc Codex, from the Space Wolf Codex, which is really our three points of reference of the direction 7th edition is going, it seems that Games Workshop is trying to bring the game back, da back down to a certain baseline, uh, which is kind of good, but it's kind of bad at the same, the same reason. Why is it good? Well, the game is very complicated. I have pretty much every codex, with the exception of the Black Legion codex, and they're pretty pricey. Um, you know, if you download every data fax, if you buy every, you know, digital codex as well, it's going to, you know, actually I don't have the Sisters of Battle one, I didn't, I didn't download that one. But, it, you know, I, I like to have the hard co cover book, I'm a collector. Um, but I do have the Inquisition one, which I hope comes out with a book, and I'm about to buy the Assassin one because it looks pretty sweet. So it seems that, that the Grey Knights in this book have gone back to a formation we used as kind of a support unit. And actually we ran a 4,000 point game, that's right guys, that's kind of our, <laughs> our go-to pointage. Uh, at the club here, like 2,000 points is probably our low end of games. We very rarely do 1850, and if we do 1850, we do teams of 1850, so we're still, you know, pulling out some serious points. That's just how we like to play Warhammer. Um, so, anyway, I had a 2,000 point game scheduled with my buddy. Uh, he came over, he's like, hey man, can you throw down 4,000? You know, <laughs> can I throw down 4,000? Of course I can, let's do it. So, you know, that four hour game turned into like a six hour game, no big deal, but I was happy to throw in some Grey Knights in there because I hadn't played for a while and also my Space Wolves took kind of a, you know, took kind of a hit in the psychic face. A lot of the new psychic powers which I was really enjoying were removed, especially the telepathy. So adding a level 3, which uh, my stern here was just a level 3 librarian, uh, for a relatively, you know, inexpensive points. I mean, yeah, it's still a little pricey model, but uh, he just standed up high and uh, held it down an objective that nobody else can get to and just cast it stuff on people and nullified a lot of uh, powers. So off the go, my look at this, I'm not terribly upset. Actually, after I bought this book after some other people reviewed it and they were all upset about it. And I was like, hey, you know what? Sounds to me like it'd be the way that I was using it. So I bought it even though I was going to buy it anyway. All right, so let's talk about the quality of the book, the aesthetics. book's beautiful. I mean, all the graphics, very interesting. There's some new fluff in here as well. They kind of confirm that the gene seed of the uh, Grey Knights is the Emperor. Uh, also about, you know, that's a pretty cool picture. Also about how, you know, they kill everybody or mind wipe anybody who learns of their existence, which is pretty interesting. Don't really like that, but it is what it is. So, interesting stuff. The one thing for uh, all you fluffy nutcases like me, uh, I found this place, this very interesting. This is the entire chapter. It has all the, the units in there. Um, they're they're pretty large, man. Pretty large chapter. I was actually pretty shocked. I mean, you're talking about they've got eight brotherhoods, which I guess are great companies, uh, but some of them have a good amount of uh, of units in them. A little bit smaller, I guess, than a normal Space Marine Army, um, but it's a lot bigger than I thought in regards to the fluff wise. Pretty cool. They are the 666th chapter. And uh, it is pretty cool how they kind of break down the purifiers and the paladins, how they are different outside of normal brotherhoods. So I thought that was pretty neat as well. There's 44 purifiers and there's 90 paladins and 12 venerable dreadnoughts. So if you're, you know, one of those guys who ever wanted to build a chapter, like the entire chapter, you know, Grey Knights would probably be easier to do than many others. I right now have... I think Logan Grimnar's complete company and Ragnar's complete company, and I'm doing pretty well with two other companies, um, but they're not complete. But fluff-wise, there's no you know, information on how many units there are. So that's pretty cool. I liked all the uh, heralds, the all their uh, icons for the shields, give you some ideas to make your units um, work the way you want to work. So. Let's uh, get out of all this. It talks about Drago. It talks about Stern. Pretty good fluff stuff. It talks about Crow, and that is about it. All the other special characters were taken out, which kind of sucks. And of course, the big hit to this book: all the Inquisition and the Assassins have been taken out. So let's talk. So pretty good artwork. 
You know, the Grey Knights, as far as I'm concerned, they're the least visual interesting looking army. They're just a lot of silver. Uh, you know, they're ridiculously easy to paint. Um, these guys, I just, you know, painted them silver, added, I think, thought a mithril highlight, and then I did like a blue wash to kind of bring it all in. And, you know, some gold with some, I forget, a sepia wash on the gold, and that was it. I mean, I didn't do any f crazy force looking swords back in the day. That wasn't really the in vogue then with airbrush. And nowadays, everybody does airbrush, but relatively easy to paint these guys. These are the old metal ones, so don't look as cool as the new plastic ones, which I have a few as well. Okay, so let's talk about the war gear. So, first off, all the force weapons lost all their cool stuff, like the, you know, plus two initiative, plus one to your invulnerable save, all that, you know, cool nonsense. Which really is kind of upsetting. That was the cool thing about them. Like, all their Terminators with swords were four up interval. So, that's usually one of my Grey Knights for the most part, is just uh, have them all have swords. It made a little bit more sense for me. Um, so, that was a little disappointing. Also, back in the day, at one point, the Demon Hammer uh, was at initiative, but that is no longer the case. You used to only be able to have one Demon Hammer per army. So, you know, it happens. No big deal. Uh, we did see some point reductions and some other things and some, you know, point increases. The uh, Relics of the Titan aren't bad. Uh, very similar to some of the stuff I saw in the Champions of Fenris. And we'll go over that here in a few. Alright, so, first off, Brother Captain. Uh, nothing really, he's basically a Space Marine Captain. Uh, no, you know, really thing that's going to strike you out. They do have, uh, you may upgrade them to a Grandmaster of 35 points. And that's going to increase his uh, psychic ability to a level two. So you pay a little bit more with the psychic ability, and there's no other stat increase with the exception of one additional attack. So that's not bad. Have the Grandmaster. I wish he would have another wound. Uh, that would make more sense to me, uh, because at that point he's like a he's like a chapter master. But so Terminator armor, Storm Bolter, Nemesis Force Sword. Frag crack and psychic out grenades, which is pretty cool. Iron Halo, so he is going to get a four up invuln instead of just normal five up. The I, I Aegis, whatever the hell it's called. Chanel, no fear. Preferred enemy demons. Psyker level one for the brother captain. Level two for the grandmaster and purity of spirits. We'll go over all the special rules here soon. Um, they uh, know the the Santic, uh demonology. Divination, divination, pyromancy, telekinesis, and telepathy disciplines. Uh, may upgrade for 35 points, I said that before. So we're talking 150, so 185, not bad. I mean, basically it's a space marine librarian for 185, but he's got three wounds and he's got a little bit more attacks and better weapon skills. So on that level, it's not terrible. Um, you know, of course, the librarians nowadays are pretty cheap. Uh, but once you start throwing in, you know, gear and everything, they get pretty, they get pretty up there in points. So the Terminator Librarian would come in at 115. You know, yeah, that's a lot less than 150. But you have plus one weapon skill, plus one blister skill, plus one wound, plus one initiative, plus one attack, and you got a four up save, which your Librarian is not going to have. So plus one to your involve. Ah. That's probably worth 35 points. I'm not gonna lie. So it's gonna make more sense on the, on that and make it more survivable. And I always go for survivability. So uh, brother Captain Stern here. Stat lines pretty much the same as your your regular uh, brother Captain. He's got all the same gear, all the same rules, and stuff. He starts off. He still starts off as a level two. The Strands of Fate, Brother Captain Stern can use this rule to reroll one rule to hit, wound, saving, throw each phase. However, each uh, dice roll used by the special rule your opponent can reroll one hit, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Do the banishment, instead of, choosing a, uh, instead of choosing all units within 12, you can pick one unit at 24. That's okay, too. And he knows the same uh, banishment. He knows banishment, hammer hand, and sanctus. Uh, and Sanctuary from the Demonology. So he already comes with his de his powers. You don't need to pick them, which is, you know, it's okay. No big deal. All right, Brotherhood Champion. Murr off the same. No other big issues. Um, you know, the Sword Strike, this is a Smash rule now. And the Blade Shield, you have uh, all fail saving throws. So you got to choose your stance, which would be pretty cool if you're fighting some terrible monster. You want to try to, you know, get your savings roll. roll. 
get your saving roll squared away. He does also have an iron halo, so he's got a four up invulnerable. So there's still a lot of invulnerable saves in this group. So I just put that out there. Um, Crow, Crow uh, weapon skills eight, BS four, strength four, toughness four, wounds two, uh, initiative six, which is going to be pretty cool. Not many Marines have initiative six. Three attacks and leadership ten. So he comes with a storm bolter, the uh, artificial armor. So he's got a two up invuln. I mean two up. He's got a four up invuln with his iron halo. He is fearless. He's got the heroic sacrifice special rule, perfect warrior special rule, and uh, mastery level two, which is important. Because um, last time I played with him, I thought he was a one, so I made a mistake with that. That's me. Uh, but all uh, purifiers are two. So make sure you guys take a note of that. Uh, he fights a challenge. He can use both the sword strike and the blade stance. So he's rerolling all his saving throws, and he's got a smash attack. Hammer of Righteousness. We'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, he does know Banishment, Hammerhead, Cleansing Flame power, so he has three powers. And here's the blade. It's just a user. I mean, I, I don't even know why they make it a relic of Titan. He can't use the demon inside. It's a demon weapon that nobody can use. It's just, you know, kind of silly. But whatever. I guess it's fluffy. I wish there was some rules to make it fluffy. It's just a strength four AP nothing blade. It's dumb. He's 175 points. It's dumb. Sorry. All right, librarian. Now, this guy, very happy with. 110 points. Yeah, he's going to be a little bit more than uh, your other uh, your other librarian once you juice him up. Um, so he'll be 135, so you're paying 20 more points for him to be a level higher than your normal Space Marine Librarian. Plus, he's going to already have the Adamantium Will, and then he's going to be able to reroll the ones for his Deny the Witch, which is pretty cool. Um, pretty happy with that. Uh, they can also take Royals for the Titan, which I'm all about survivability, and there's armor in here for 15 or, 15 or 10 points that gives you uh, It Will Not Die. So if you take that wound, you get a chance to get it back, which I'm pretty happy with. And then the Tech Marine, you know, same old, same old, we'll just, you know, no big deal. He's got Hammer Hand, which could be pretty cool, since he's got a, uh, you know, Power Fist kind of attack with his, uh, his backpack, Servo Harness. Still got Bolster Defense, Special Rule, no other issue there, he's 90 points, a little, little heavy on the points, but no big deal. All right, guys, the Strike Squad. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to say I, I don't really know why I would ever play a Strike Squad. I mean, I guess if I just wanted a couple of Grey Knight characters and I wanted some low point, you know, troop choices for my alliance, it's not worth it. Not really worth it. I'd rather have the uh, Terminators right off the bat. Um, I, you know, every one of these guys should have two attack space. You know, they're Grey Knights. They're freaking. They should all be veteran levels. The fact that you know one Grey Knight has one attack, it's just ridiculous. Not, I'm not feeling that, and I've been that way for a while. I think, I think they should get rid of the Terminator squad and just have Paladins, so they all have two Moon Terminators. But whatever. So pretty much the same with this. They have uh, Banishment, Hammer Hand, Psychic Powers. They're level one, and the same thing with the Terminators, level one. They've got Banishment and Hammer Hand. So unfortunately, like I said before, they don't get all the, the spiffy little bonuses they used to get with their force weapons. Um, so their troop selection kind of kind of didn't do that well. But you know, Terminators are Terminators. You either love them or hate them. And I uh, had a squad of Terminators. They uh, did pretty well in the last game. Took a lot of beating for firepower. And it's funny, it's one of those units that if people start committing to dumping rounds that direction and they can't kill them, they usually keep on dumping rounds, so they're like, oh, i got to take care of those Terminators. So there's a, that psychological effect that Terminators have on people sometimes. Me, myself, I am horrible at rolling Terminator saves. I will roll one. If I need a two up, I'll roll one. Now, give me a Storm Shield, and I'll roll three up in Vaughn's all day long. That's not a problem with me, but for two ups, just can't do it. Doesn't make any sense. All right, Purifying Squad. What I did with these guys was pretty sneaky. Um, I threw these guys in a drop pod, and they came down, and they opened up some flames onto somebody with their nasty, nasty flames on some Eldar who don't like flames because they thought they would be in cover. Pretty cool. 
they also are level two psychers. So remember that, guys. They are level two. Um, that's going to help you out. I forgot about purifiers being level two psychers because they are, you know, they are the veterans that I think the normal strike squad should be. Um, and this is what I think. This should be the the Great Knights troop selection. If, if you're going to thin this out, just get rid of these guys altogether. Just get rid of them. You know, I'll pay the extra points. Just give me these guys. Uh, people get very, very uh, scared of two wound terminators. They don't like that. Um, you know, you're not going to throw that many strength eight attacks to cause instant death on them most of the times. Um, but yeah, it's all about these guys. And these guys are only level one, which I don't understand why they would, would be level two psychers as well. But whatever. Uh, you are able to throw the apothecary on here for a little bit more survivability, and I'm all about that. Um, now, 55 models, 55 points per per paladin. That is really expensive. Um, I don't know if you know. I don't know if that justifies how expensive it is. You're talking about the same price as, as a chaos lord, and I just don't think these guys, sh you know, are doing it like a chaos lord is. Um, you know, I know they have terminator armor. But I just don't think that's worth it. I don't agree with that pointage. But you know, it is what it is. Paladin never did that well for me anyway. But uh, not to say that I just don't think they should be a troop choice. Dreadnoughts, more of the same. They're still a they're still a psyker, so that's good. Then you lost your psychic pilot on all the uh, on all the vehicles, which is going to hurt. You know, these guys. Interceptor squad. I'm actually still pretty much a fan of uh, the. Uh, shunt move. I think it's pretty cool. I like being able to do that. So uh, same, same as anybody else. I mean, second half grenades are pretty awesome, especially if you know playing somebody like Eldar, where you know there's a lot of psychers and a lot of different units, and you know you throw a second half grenade, it hits the unit, and it's going to force them to take a psychic test, which may wipe the unit. You know, depending on the situation, that can be pretty nasty. So playing psychic heavy armies is pretty cool. Storm Raven Gunship, they did get rid of those really cool missiles they used to have, but, you know, I never use these things anyway, I hate the way they look. Trigation Squad, kind of like their heavy support choice, uh, not bad, they're level 1, these guys would be extremely nasty to drop in a drop pod. That would suck, to so come in with some flamers and go to town. Uh, they do no banishment and hammer hand, like I said before, uh, they're level 1, pretty much all the same deal. There's not many models difference in the Grey Knights. So who was a big winner? Uh, the Dread Knight, for two reasons. One, they took a significant point reduction. And I just wanna, I just wanna double check. A lot of people hated this model. I know when I first saw it, I wasn't a huge fan. It is what it is. Uh, but I've kind of grown to accept it. I'll leave it at that. So Nemesis Dread Knight used to be 130, just like it is now. The point reduction, though, came from uh, the heavy incinerator was 30, so that took a 10 point. The uh, Gatling silencer was 35, that took a 5 point. The heavy side cannon was 30, was 40, that took a 5 point reduction. The Nemesis hammer used to be 10, now it's 5. The great sword used to be 10. Uh, I'm sorry, the great sword used to be 25, now it's 10. And also the uh, teleporter used to be 75, and now it's 30. So that's the big difference there. Now it's worth taking, um, and it's pretty bad. It, I, so my first, I got first turn in the game I played. Had one of these guys right on my line. Uh, was able to cast invisibility on him, so I knew he would last a turn. He went through. He uh, flamed on some of the uh, the unit that he could jump out and hit. And then I use the uh, the Gatling silencer, which also is a force weapon. So it passed my force test, and I was causing instant death with uh, some shots. Pretty nasty, especially if you're shooting into some squads that have uh, some multiple wounds. That can be devastating. Not the nothing for the AP, but you know, pretty crazy. All right, same deal with the Land Raider, Land Raider Crusader, and the Redeemer. No more psychic pack, uh, psychic pilot. All right, so. Drago. Drago got a little bit worse, uh, but at the same time a little bit better. So he's no longer HQ, now he is a uh, 
a uh, Lord of War. So his base cost, he went down 30 points. He was at 275, and now he's at 245. His stat line got a little weaker, though. All right, so he was weapon skill 7, now he's weapon skill 6. He was ballistic skill 6, now he's ballistic skill 5. He was strength and toughness 5, now he's strength and toughness 4. Uh, but his initiative, attacks, and leadership, and saves were all the same. So he still has internal warrior. He still has fearless. He doesn't have the grand strategy anymore. And he's a psych level 2, just like he was before. Uh, so, yeah, mm, not really happy with that. He does have uh, some better powers this time. He does have um, Banishment, Gate of Infinity, and Hammer Hand, where before he had Hammer Hand, Psychic Communion, and uh, San uh, that, that fun flame one, Santic Flame. So he still has a Storm Shield. Now, there was some debate at one point, I think it was FAQ, that his Storm Shield still counts as a Force. I mean, I'm sorry, his, his, uh, the Titan Sword still counted as a Force Sword, so it would also add the plus one Invulnerable. I know we went back and forth about that was between the group, but I did find there was FAQ. Uh, his uh, Demon Slayer gives him preferred enemy, and uh, the Titan Sword is an AP2 weapon now, which that is better. Uh, let me just look at the old rules for it. Um, so before it was uh, the Sainted Flame was a template, and I don't want to worry about that, that's long gone. The Titan Sword was a strength 10, but it's just, it was a four sword, so it was AP3. So now it's AP2, two, and uh, that was only reserved at a, a strength 10 if he was fighting demons or psychers. So now it's a strength 7, um, which is pretty nasty. You're talking about insta-killing some, uh, some people out there with this AP2 nasty sword. So, not bad. Price reduction is good. He's not as he's not a monster like he was before, so now he's more in line with other uh, other chapter masters. So I did miss the fact they took out some other characters though out of the book. Um, let's get to those guys. So like Mordrake was pretty cool having the ghostly bodyguards. That was just nifty. I saw and some guys like painted up some really cool looking ghost um, knights, so they they can never do that anymore. That that really sucks. And the one guy that couldn't die, uh, Thrawn, Thawn, whatever his name was, uh, he should not yield on a four more. You put him back. Um, that was pretty cool as well. And of course, you lost all the Inquisitioners. Inquisition. Uh, the formation: one Chapter Master, one Brother Captain, one Brotherhood Champion, three Strike Squads, three Terminator Squads, two Interceptor Squads, two. Uh, Purgation Squad, one Dread Knight, and one Dread Knot. Um, it's a pretty large force. You're talking about some points in that one. And that's pretty much it. So, I didn't get to the special rules yet. We'll read those real quick. Alright. The Aegis, uh, you can re-roll and you deny the rich test with rolls of one. Which is pretty cool. It's going to help out a lot. Um, Purity of Spirits, you don't have to worry about Perils if you if you roll any doubles on the the demonology Santic table, of course we have the combat squads are all in there and the warlord traits we have a demon slayer the warlord has demon has hatred demon special rules in addition to the warlord attempting to manifest the banishment psychic powers see the demonology discipline will successful harness warp charges points on a d6 roll of two or better so that's pretty cool that means you're pretty much always me always me uh, rolling the banishment. Um, Hammer of Righteousness. The Warlord and his unit have the Hammer of Wrath special rule. Nah, eh, it's okay. The Warlord and all friendly units, uh, unyielding anvil. The Warlord and all friendly units within the Great Knight faction have 12 inches of him, have the stubborn special rule. If first to the, fry, the fray, if placed in Deep Strike Reserves, the Warlord and his unit automatically arrive in your first turn and can re roll the Scatter Dice when in Deep Strike. So that's a pretty good one, especially when you get in there and cause some hate. Perfect timing, the Warlord and his unit have the counterattack special role. Lord Master, the Warlord knows one more psychic power than is normal if he's a psychic master level, which must be generated from the, the Sanctum Discipline. So, that's pretty cool as, as well. Um, the Nemesis weapons, like I said before, they lost all their special stuff. So now Nemesis 4 Swords is just user AP 3, the, the Halberds are plus 1, the Demon Hammers are times 2 AP 2, 
Uh, the warding staffs are plus two four, so this basically, you know, you know, force maces or whatever. Um, the uh, fletchings or whatever, they're uh, AP three, so you get a special plus one point for those for attack. And then the great sword is, and then the great sword is times two AP two, master crafted, special weapon which you don't have to really worry about. The staff you always you also get ward which it gives you adamantium will. The silencers now have the four special weapon that's pretty cool. I think it's gonna be pretty nasty for people in the, <laughs> the very near future. All the incinerators are strength six. Heavy incinerators are strength six. I have the soul blaze rule so that makes them a little bit more nasty, especially when you're talking about some you know lower toughness creatures like Eldar. What are you gonna do? You don't have an invulnerable save on those guys, which a lot of Eldar don't. They're gone, gone. Not happy. The side cannon changed a lot. Salvo 2-4. It does have the running rule, so that's not bad. Um, but that kind of sucks. I mean, I guess you're going to be good to go with Terminators because they have Relentless, so you get four shots. Strength 7, AP 4. The uh, heavy side cannon focus fire is uh, Salvo 3-6. Um, the heavy side cannon area saturation is a heavy 1 large blast. So that's pretty good. That's, that's not bad. I don't think that's that hateful. Uh, conversion beam is the same. Don't worry about that. And uh, that's pretty much all the difference with the weapons. So there's special issue war gear. Banner's going to give them one plus attack for anybody within 12 inches. Nothing really crazy here. The shunt move hasn't really changed. 30 inches and you're treated like as if you deep struck in reference to moving in, in combat. You don't actually scatter. Psychic grenades are pretty cool. Uh, shooting attack, 8 inch range, strength is 2, assault 1, blast, psy shock. Any unit containing at least one model psyker, i.e., model with psychic brotherhood or sorcerer or psychic pilot, special rule, is hit by a weapon with a psy shock, special rule. One randomly determined psyker model and that unit suffers a perils of the warp in addition to any other damage. So you don't even need to penetrate them. It's kind of like the rag grenades. They just have to be hit. So that's kind of, that's pretty nasty. Dropping down and throwing some grenades into some Psyker squads and hopefully the warp will eat them up. That would be awesome. Relics of uh, Titan. The Bone Shard. Uh, the Bear of the Bone Shard has plus one invulnerable save within 12 inches. At least one model with a Demon Special Rule. Two if you're playing Corn. So that's a must have. Uh, Caress of Sacrifice. Uh, Pseudo Terminator Armor. Two up, five up invulnerable with It Will Not Die. It's also pretty inexpensive. Most of the relics of Titan are, are cheap, 10 to 15 points. I was actually shocked. Domina Libia Demonica. Hope that's right. I didn't do very well in Latin. The bear has one more psychic power than normal. One extra power and then rerolling your ones. The Fury of Demonos, 36 inch range, strength 4, AP 5. Assault 3, Mastercrafted, Precision Shot. Ah, I don't worry about that. The Nemesis Banner, friendly units with the Grey Knight Faction with the 12 inch of the bear have the Fearless Special Rule in addition. And the Grey Knight Faction, the same unit, all have plus one attack while their bearer is alive. Furthermore, all models with the Demon Special Rule, friend or foe, treat all terrain, even open ground within 12 inches of the bearer as dangerous. So, you know, make some demons, take some dangerous terrain tests. Not, it's not bad, nothing, nothing that great. Uh, the Soul Glaive, plus one strength, AP3, melee, force, demon bane. Soul imprinted and two handed. A character wielding the soul, soul glaive rerolls failed psychic tests when attempting to manifest the force psychic powers. Furthermore, if the force psychic power is successfully manifested in a target and targets that character wielding this weapon or his unit, then additional to usual effects, the soul glaive rerolls all fail to hit, to wound, and armor penetration rolls while the blessing is in effect. It's pretty nasty. So I'm not going to go through all the Santic powers, guys. That's been done to death. And I didn't buy the Tactical Objective cards for Grey Knights. I might pick those up, but I play mostly my Space Wolves right now anyway. And this, oh man, this aggravates me. This was all muffled up when I got it. So all in all, yeah, they definitely took a, they became more of a support unit. You know, I definitely think that's what happened here. Is that a bad thing? Well, if you're a Grey Knight player, probably. You probably hate that. Uh, I am, I've am. i been a Grey Knight support guy. been using them for support for a while. So for me, 
it doesn't really affect me that that bad. I'm really happy with the the Dread Knight. Um, I'm gonna start running that guy more often. I work. I used him the other day, and he did awesome. He did. I mean, he died in turn two because he got you know pummeled to death by some wraith guard, but that's okay. He uh, killed the warlord and did a lot of damage to the rest of uh, my buddy's army. So I definitely earned his points back uh, before he died. Um, so I'm gonna give it a try with some paladins and, and all Grey Knight Force here to see how it is. Uh, but the loss of the Inquisition to have those really low point um, uh, you know, troop squads yeah, kind of affected them as well. So time's gonna tell on that. I'm not terribly upset with the book. Uh, I am liking the fact that the uh, the Dread Knights are so much cheaper. Really happy. I'm just gonna do Power Fist, you know, Gatling Silencer, and, and Incinerator. That's the way I'm gonna go. So pretty much it guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed that and we'll let you know just a little bit more when we get into it, but uh, dropping these guys down in some uh, drop pods for my Space Wolves was pretty fun. Alright you guys, take care, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and until next time, you guys have a good one.